ETFs that invest in foreign stocks are in the news. There's big technology IPOs coming out of China and India. Plus, which emerging markets are poised to become the next mega growth stories? Kevin Carter, the founder at EMQQ, joins us right after this. I'm Ron DeLegge with ETF Guide TV. A cordial welcome to all. If it's your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and never miss any of our timely episodes. So today's focus is on internet and e-commerce and emerging market stocks in these fast growing sectors. Now, helping us to break that down and analyze these key trends and also how to participate in the growth is Kevin Carter, founder and chief investment officer at EMQQ. Kevin, great to see you again. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks, Ron. Great to see you again. So the last time we chatted, you made a strong argument for investing in emerging markets by focusing on companies that are involved in high growth sectors like e-commerce and internet versus the traditional approach, which is the broadly diversified strategy. So why do you still think that a concentrated approach to emerging market investing is still the better way? Well, I, I think for two reasons. First of all, um, you know the broad emerging market indexes have uh, a big problem, which are the state-owned enterprises, which dominate the, the indexes, which are full of corruption and really haven't performed well at all. And that's why you know the broad emerging market indexes are basically have zero return over the last 14 years. And and really, you know, where the growth is is in the consumer, and that's a well-documented story. And and the the very important difference is, you know, that in our world. Uh, consumption has changed with the advent of the smartphone, and we all know how important Amazon is to us and Netflix and Google. Well, the reality is that in, most of the world's people are in emerging markets. 90% of the world's people uh, are in emerging markets, and they're getting their first ever computer. It's a smartphone in their pocket, and uh, it's also giving them their first internet access. And as a, a result, uh, these people are becoming consumers as digital natives, and the growth of the sector. Uh, the revenue growth in the emerging markets internet sector has been incredible and, and I believe the, the fastest growing sector in the world. Big IPOs are coming from emerging markets, as you know. Didi, the Chinese version of Uber, just went public. Over in India, Paytm, which is like the PayPal of India, is expected to go IPO later this year. And it's really a sign that emerging markets are maturing. Um, but we also see regulators in some of these countries. They seem to be overreaching. So how do you see it? Well, look, the, the reality is that, that you know, these types of businesses, e, you know, internet businesses, e-commerce businesses, uh, these are regulated businesses all over the world. And you don't have to look very far. I think the last headline I looked at before we got on here was about Google getting sued for, by uh, dozens of states for their, uh, you know, their um, app store. And Apple, of course, was just in a courtroom about eight miles from here. Uh, last month for similar uh, issues with their uh, app store. So this isn't a unique thing with emerging markets, but you know where we're seeing it is in China. And the Chinese uh, government has uh, very much increased their vigilance. You know, that started in uh, the fall with the Ant Group IPO getting pulled and a reworking of all of the fintech regulations for, for China, which I think was, was needed. And I think the government had to, to stop that IPO and get the, the rules uh, to catch up with the incredible growth that's happened in the fintech space. Uh, then it was the antitrust and monopoly issues, which showed up also in November uh, in China that, that scared people a little bit. But I, that didn't bother me either, because you know if you're, if you're getting close to being a monopoly, that means you're doing something right and very powerful. So that, that didn't really bother me. And it wasn't really a secret, some of the things that Alibaba was doing uh, that were certainly anti-competitive. So they also cleaned up that. And now this week we have uh, another one, and that has to do with cybersecurity. And, and as uh, you know, most of the, the viewers will, will know that Didi, as you said, the Uber of China came public last week. And the next day, the, the um, Enforcement agents for the cybersecurity rules said they're going to launch an investigation. And then over the weekend, they stopped, uh, they removed uh, the DD app from the app stores in China. And that very much rattled the market. I think it, it, it 
should have rattled the market. And I think it was, you know, it's still not clear exactly uh, what happened, but but the the fact is that data security is an value an important thing in all countries in China, no different. But I think that in general, what's happened is people in the United States, investors have really a, a demonized view of Chinese government. And anytime the Chinese government gets involved, the uh, the sky is falling basically in the mind of investors, and that that's just a you know, you know, one more step uh, closer to Xi Jinping taking over Alibaba and, you know, thinking that Jack Ma was uh, picked up by a, a secret police in a van and blindfolded. These are the types of, I think, incredibly overblown concerns people have about China. I think the reality is that China's done very well and grown very fast, and the regulations in, in many of these uh, e-commerce businesses has, has not kept up. And the Chinese are very smart in, pl in planning their economy and how it continues to grow. And I think uh, what they're doing is long-term healthy, but I know it rattles U.S. investors when they hear that the Chinese government's stepping in and, and doing things that uh, otherwise uh, uh, slow down the businesses involved. Yeah. And these uh, short-term pullbacks also offer an opportunity for investors to take advantage of some of these lower prices because you know every single if you look at the longer term trend as you know it's still up now looking beyond the the dominant emerging market players in china and india and of course you think about russia and brazil you know the so-called BRIC countries where do you see some other countries like kind of the next and upcoming countries that kind of like the next wave whether that's you know specific countries or specific sector trends that that you think are worth mentioning, sure. Well, the next frontier is basically all of it. Uh, you know, ex China. China is uh, a massive country; it's the largest population, as everyone knows. And their uh, internet and e-commerce and smartphone markets are all the largest in the world by far. And so they really stand alone as the emerging market, but. Everywhere else is going through the same thing, but from a lower base. And so all over the world, there's exciting growth in these sort of next frontier, if you will, places. In India, the, the, you know, the second largest population, which will be the first largest population uh, in the not too distant future, it's experiencing incredible growth. There's still only about a third of their population have smartphones, but they're, you know, just in the time we're on the phone here, tens of thousands of people will get their first ever computer in form of a smartphone and their first internet access. And so India is definitely the place that offers both the most opportunity and the and likely the fastest growth rate uh, you know, over the next couple of decades. And India also has the best demographics. The Generation Z, the Zillennials are coming uh, fast and uh, the largest uh, share of those uh, under 30 year olds are in uh, India. So it's companies like Paytm that you mentioned that, that uh, counts Alibaba as a major shareholder, but also counts Berkshire Hathaway as a shareholder. That company yeah. should come public. And then uh, the, uh, Geo, uh, which is part of Reliance Industries, which we think can be the super app of India, will probably uh, come public next year. And, and also Flipkart, which is the you know e-commerce leader that Amazon Dot com, if you will, of India, although India or Amazon does compete in India. So India, by far the biggest opportunity. Southeast Asia, the other 650 million people that are in places like Indonesia and Vietnam, that market is on fire. Um, we're going to see um, some more IPOs there. We have C Limited, which is uh, already public and part of uh, EMQQ and one of the best performing stocks in the world. Uh, operating in Southeast Asia in uh, gaming and in financial services and in um, uh, uh, e-commerce. Um, you've got Gojek and Tokopedia, which are like the Uber and the Amazon of Indonesia. They've just merged to form a super app called GoTo, which will probably come public. Uh, Grab, another Singapore-based company that started in Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, is going to uh, come public via SPAC. So Southeast Asia's got its own booming story. Uh, South America's got lots of the same story happening. New Bank, which is the largest online bank in the world out of Brazil, 
Uh, they're going to probably IPO this year. They just raised $500 million from Berkshire Hathaway the last uh, few weeks. So that one's exciting. And then uh, Eastern Europe's had an incredible uh, number of, of new listings. You had Ozone, which is the uh, number two e-commerce player in Russia. You had uh, Allegro, the Amazon.com of uh, Poland come public, now the largest company in Warsaw. And just uh, last week, we had the Turkish uh, e-commerce leader, uh, Hepsperata, begin trading here in the U.S. So the story is spreading and uh, it's going to keep spreading and we're going to continue to see IPOs as this e-commerce story spreads over the whole world. Yeah. And thank you for pointing out too some of the big companies backing these, you know, upstart companies that are going public, which I think is very important because that gives you perspective. Follow the money. You know, if the smart money is, su is supporting these same trends and that tells you kind of what you should be doing. One last thing, Kevin, before you take off, you know, EMQQ just completed its semi-annual rebalancing. Nine companies were added, three were dropped. Tell us a little bit more about some of the index changes made and how that's impacted the fund's country and sector weightings. Sure. Well, the country uh, weightings are largely the same. I mean, in, uh, uh, China has always been the biggest uh, part of the story, about 60 percent, and, and that will uh, likely uh, last for a long time. We had a, a decent um, uh, increase in the India exposure. We actually bought uh, Reliance Industries, which is the group that controls the geo digital platform that we're excited about. Uh, so India uh, took a meaningful uh, increase. Um, and then we had, uh, you know, some other interesting names. One, uh, JD Health, uh, which is a the healthcare division of JD.com, which is one of our top ten holdings and a Chinese e-commerce leader. And that's one of the things people don't quite recognize is some of these companies, particularly like Alibaba and Tencent, they have not only invested in lots of other internet companies, but they've started other. Um, uh, internet companies inside of themselves focus on different consumer verticals and healthcare is a pretty big deal. And so you've now got JD's healthcare business is uh, went public in December and was just picked up um, as was Alibaba's healthcare business. So uh, JD.com. And then we, we picked up what is essentially the Charles Schwab meets Robin hood of, uh, of Brazil XP. So those are a couple of the ads and the list will continue to grow. When we launched about seven years ago, we had 42 companies, and now we have about 118. So this story's also producing a lot of large companies that are coming public. Well, thank you so much, Kevin, for your insights. Keep up the good work, and uh, we look forward to catching up with you soon. All right. Thanks, Ron. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's focus on emerging markets and uh, ETF trends to play that. Uh, post your comments below. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Ron Legge with ETF Guide. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.